Chancellor. What this means is, when any action comes before you, hidden from plain sight, is the fact that a tribunal has already acted against you, a tribunal has already effectively accused and judged you, and all they need is to get you to agree in the three stages of the play. You have been judged, you have been weighed, you have been measured. When people say that you are guilty, the second that you walk in there, it is absolutely true. The system is geared for that, already geared for that. But what's more important, or what is as important, not more important, is important, is when you enter that courtroom, not a single one of the people in there are part of the original tribunal that has accused you. Not one. The judge isn't the plenipotentiary or the prothonotary. The prosecutor is certainly not the plenipotentiary. And the clerk is certainly not the clerk of courts. Not one of the people in that courtroom is one of the originating that brought the summons to life, the matter to life, or putting the accusations. They are all actors. They are all acting, having gained their powers from these three other officers, these three other people away from the court. Well, let's investigate a bit more about some of these controls because there are three controls that they are putting on us in a court. And if you've been listening to these calls, you'd be aware that we have added not only to the role of the executive letter, but we have also added to that the concept of the decree of... Notice. And these can be viewed on one-heaven.org. And when you get there, go and have a look at how to succeed a court. And when you get there, look at executor office. And when that comes up, you'll see that those documents are located there. Well, let's look at some of the controls around these, these roles and, and how deep it goes, even if these people are ignorant, even of the power that they have. So I mentioned that the plenipotentiary is claiming a guardianship power. So let's have a look at the definition of guardian. <clears throat> we spoke about it last week, but what is the word guardian? And where does it come from? Well, the, the, the word guardian ultimately means a keeper or custodian. And of course, when you go and look at it in the dictionary or blacks or any of these, there's all kinds of various definitions. But in our research and in our understanding now, of how the College of Abbreviators, which is another name for the Scriveners, which is another name ultimately for the Jesuits, how they constructed new words out of Latin, we were able to break down the word guardian into two parts. The word gero, G-E-R-O, and the word deum. And when they're put together, and one of the rules of the College of Abbreviators is that when one wishes to construct new words out of two Latin roots, you remove the first letter of the first word so that you are just dealing with the root of that word and none of its declensions. So I drop the O and I have gerdium or guardium. And what Ger gero means, G-E-R-O, means to conduct, manage, minister and spend. And deum means God. So when the two are together, it means administrator of or for God. So a guardian is a purely ecclesiastical authority, ultimately, claiming their role as an administrator of or for God. Well, how do they claim this power? What have they done so that secular roles can claim an ecclesiastical power of such incredible claim? And we'll get to that in a moment, about what ultimately that ubiquitous birth certificate ultimately proves. And we'll come back to that. 
Now, I mentioned another role, and we spoke about it, and we've been speaking about it, the executor. What do we mean by executor? Well, executor is similar, not actual, but similar to prosecutus. So you break executor up into X, E-X, the letter E, and then cutus. X, X, E, cutus, which literally means by authority from the flesh. So when you think about an executor, particularly a scrivener, issuing a indulgence, the claim of executor powers is by consent. Consent is what grants the executor role because it literally means by authority from the flesh. Ex e cutis. That's the scrivener, that's the prothonotary. Now I mentioned the clerk as chancellor in the role of custodian. What do we mean by custodian? Well, the word custodian itself is similar to guardian. It has the I-N at the, at the end, and of course it comes from a similar construction. Custos is the first word, meaning guard, bodyguard, protector, jailer, warder, sentry, spy. And the second is deum, again, God. So when the two are put together and you drop off the S, you have custodium, custodian, meaning guard, protector, jailer of or for God. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> perverse. A guard, protector, jailer of or for God. If ever you wanted proof how perverse and how totally ecclesiastical their power is. Now, if you want to get a perspective on it, the ecclesiastical is private, the secular is public. Two sides of a document, the veil in between, private, public, private is ecclesiastical. Custodian is guardian, protector, jailer of the full God. So now we have an understanding of the words and claims of their system. We have an understanding that we're dealing with actors, that none of the people in that court uh, have uh, any, that none of them have any of the first reason to bring against us. They have been appointed to those roles. The next question is, what is the ultimate claim that they are using to get in there and do that? We spoke a bit about it last week, but we'll, we'll go through it again. How do we get them out of those roles? How do we defeat them in those roles? And then some practical examples of, of, of exactly how to do it. Well, it's time to talk about the ultimate power that the system is using. I mentioned last week that they uh, treat us all as uh, patients of a mental asylum in wards and that the whole concept of local councils is about overlaying a concept of hospitals, being a military system over us and appointing guardians. But there is an ecclesiastical aspect to it and given the word guardian is administrator of or for God and given that the role of custodian is the guard, protector, jailer of or for God, then clearly you, you would expect to see that there is some primary ecclesiastical instrument or act that they are using against us. And there is. It is the event and the ceremony of baptism. And let me explain. I'm mindful in our upbringing that if one looks at a dictionary and tries to understand the history of the Nazarenes and the followers of Yeshua, not the Roman cult, the word you'll find is baptism. If one goes into Mithraism, and starts to look at Mithraism and their ceremonies, which was about rolling garments in blood and anointment in blood, then the word used is baptism. If we go back, in fact, to almost any culture, the word they're describing as one of the key rituals is literally baptism. They will not give you the word that was used. They will not. These, these words have been hidden, distracted, 
from us. So we believe when we think of the word baptism that it is a ritual originating, well, for many of us, originating back to the teachings of Jesus, Yeshua, the Master, whatever name we wish to ascribe. Now, some know that there are other rituals uh, of, of uh, membership, uh, of blessing, of uh, commitment, that are earlier than that. Mithraism, of course, that I mentioned, where the word baptism is claimed. So there's some confusion. In, in many cases, people say, uh, and, and naturally, I reject this idea that baptism was an inherited ritual because it seems so central to the beliefs of Yeshua. It was central. The concept of being welcome to the community, the ritual that welcomed you, was always with adults, never with children, ever. No ancient civilization ever performed a ritual of membership on a baby. None. Not the North American Indians, not the followers of Mithra, not the Zoroastrians, not the Sumerians, not the Akkadians, not the Assyrians, and definitely, definitely not the Gnostics, and absolutely no Christians. The first time, the first time in history, anyone came up with the idea of performing a ceremony of joining someone to a community on an infant was the Roman cult. And it started in the 13th century. It appeared to fail and was resurrected again in the 14th century. Well, that's an odd thing too. Why would such an important ceremony fail? But the first and only time such a ceremony was performed on an infant was by the Roman cult under the name baptism well what was the ceremony then if it was for adults and it was for adults everywhere else in the world what was that adult ceremony for the Gnostics, for the Nazarenes for Yeshua well under the Greek word it was epinoia Epinoi. Epinoia was the knowing. It was the knowing of the mind and the reason. It was the knowing of the teachings, the discernment, the reason. It was the free will. It was the awakening. Now, an infant has no opportunity to uh, protest and non-consent. How can an infant non-consent? It can't. And the argument that the parents can do it for them is absurd. No one has the right to put me into something without my consent. No one. And certainly not into a, a ritual which we're told under Roman cult dogma means that once you are baptised, that's it. You can't be baptised in any other society, in any other religion, in any other way, again, once it's done, it's done for good. Once and that's it. And there is no remedy in their system for undoing a baptism. Remedy makes the law. So here you have a dogma that says it happens once, it happens to infants, it cannot be removed. Unbelievable. And it is central to the fraudism that we're dealing with, central to it. So the word was epinoia, epinoi, as far as the Gnostics in their celebration of a ceremony using water, not blood. Remember, Mithraism at the time was the, the de jure religion of the world, and it, it extended all over the place, and it was the it was the religion of the Roman uh, pagan empire and the Gnostics, who went by many names, the Therapeutae as one, uh, Gnosis, Nazarenes, Truth Seekers as another, had a completely different approach, which was about water and awakening. 
and peace and harmony. And they never.